Whoa, she's incredibly cute. We just heard my best friend had her baby. So my husband and I headed to the maternity ward. The newborn was so tiny. It really made me appreciate the miracle of life. But inside, I was filled with a mix of emotions. I'm sorry, little one. You are so adorable. But things might get tough soon. Back in my friend's room, my husband couldn't stop smiling and said, Seriously, wasn't that baby just the cutest? My friend beamed a thankful smile at his words. Then, he turned to me, still smiling. Right, Sandra? Babies are just adorable. Yeah, they are. Especially when they look just like you. What? Suddenly, my husband and friend looked stunned. That's when I decided to drop the bombshell. I'm Sandra, 29 years old. I studied economics in college, and now I'm working at my parents' company. We have been running the company since my grandpa's time, and my dad's the current CEO. The plan is for my husband Frank to take over someday. I met Frank about four years ago. He was a client of our company, but we rarely crossed paths. Then, through a work project, we clicked. Being the same age, it was easy to talk and share ideas. As a CEO's daughter, people often kept me at arm's length, so his normal treatment of me was a breath of fresh air. Sandra, you know, for a CEO's daughter, you don't act all high and mighty. He told me that before we got together. Most would take that as a backhanded compliment, but I was just glad to be seen as an equal, a regular employee. That's a first for me, but thanks. Thanks? Aren't you supposed to get mad at a comment like that? I've always wanted to be seen as just another employee, not the CEO's daughter, so... Well then, I guess I'm doing something right. Yes, you are. After that, things with him progressed quickly. We naturally started dating, and on our second anniversary, he proposed. I never thought I'd get married so fast. I was surprised, but ecstatic. I immediately told my best friend Lisa. Lisa, this is crazy. What do I do? I just got proposed to. Seriously? That's amazing. I still can't believe it. Am I really good enough? Stop it. He proposed because he loves you. Duh. Lisa and I go way back to middle school. She never treated me differently, even knowing my parents are CEOs. She's always been straightforward with me, not weird or overly friendly because of my family's status. I told her first about dating Frank. We've all hung out a few times since, and she's always liked him. It's great to see your close ones get along. She was genuinely happy about my engagement. It's been two years since our wedding. We don't have kids yet, mainly because we are not intimate much. Frank's company seems really busy, and he often works late. My job is more laid back, so I'm usually home by dinner time. After I get back, it was basically my job to prepare dinner. I was making dinner one night when Frank called. He sounded sorry as he said, Sorry, Sandra. I'll be late again. I don't need dinner tonight. But I've already started cooking. I'm really sorry, but you know how it is. I can't leave the office. Why not just eat when you get home? No, I will grab something with the team. Gotta treat them as their boss. And I need to work hard now to be ready to take over your dad's company. I get that, but... Anyway, that's the deal. Don't wait up for me. He hung up before I could say anything else. With a dial tone ringing, my frustration mounted. What's with that attitude? 
He could have told me earlier about dinner. And why did his overtime suddenly spike after we got married? He used to come home early, when we were dating and newly married. But this past year, he's been coming home way later, and we hardly see each other on weekdays. I want kids soon, but that's not even a thought for him right now. On weekends, he just sleeps or goes out by himself. We barely have any couple time, and my unhappiness just keeps piling up. Then one day, Lisa reached out, and we planned to catch up. Waiting at our usual cafe, she showed up a little late. Sorry I'm late. Things were chaotic at home. No worries. I've been dying to talk to you. What's up? Something good? The opposite. Frank and I just aren't clicking lately. Really? It's not like you to talk that way about him. I had never badmouthed him before, but now I just can't help but vent about his attitude. It's sad that even meeting up with my best friend is overshadowed by this, so I quickly shifted the focus to her. How have you been? You called me out of the blue, so I thought maybe something was up. Actually, yeah, there's something I've been wanting to tell you. What is it? Don't tell me you got a boyfriend. Um, well, actually, I'm pregnant. What? My mind was racing. Her news had completely thrown me for a loop. What do you mean? You don't even have a boyfriend. And now you're pregnant? But looking closer, I could see her belly was indeed showing. Seeming to guess my thoughts, she quickly smiled and started explaining. Sorry for the shock. I'm 30 weeks along now. What? You're in your third trimester already? Who's the father? About the father, well, we're not planning to get married. What do you mean? You know who the father is, right? Yeah, but it's complicated. We're not getting married, but he's agreed to pay child support. So it's okay. If that's what you want. I didn't want to butt in, but raising a child alone, even with child support, isn't easy. If she knows who the father is, and they care for each other, wouldn't it be better to be together? I couldn't help but think that. But she must have thought this through. If she decided to raise a child alone, I would support her. Criticizing her or giving unsolicited advice now would only make her anxious. Confident in my decision, I smiled and took her hand. Lisa, you've made up your mind, right? Yeah, sorry for worrying you. Don't worry about me. I'm just concerned about you. Let me know if there's anything I can do, okay? Thank you, Sandra. I'm sorry. Stop apologizing, really. Despite her pregnancy, she seems somewhat downcast. I've never been pregnant, but maybe it's not all happiness. As her best friend, I would do anything to support her. That night, I decided to tell my husband about her pregnancy when he got home. He finally came back after 11 p.m., and I immediately brought it up. Hey, Frank. Lisa is pregnant. Really? That's news. Is that all you have to say? She's pregnant. Well, congratulations to her. She's going to be a mom. Thing is, she's decided not to marry the guy. Seems like there is some situation. I see. Well, people have their reasons. Maybe it's best not to pry too much. I felt a strange unease. Usually, he would listen attentively when I talked about her. But today was different. Instead of showing interest in such big news, he seemed almost avoidant. They were close, so why was he acting so distant? I thought he'd be more surprised or happy. The next day, he left early. 
and I had the day off with nothing planned. So I decided to start looking for a baby shower gift for Lisa. Just then, my phone died, so I turned on my husband's laptop he usually uses. Several tabs were open from sleep mode. Without thinking much, I started checking the open tabs. One of them was his email folder. He uses email on his laptop? I thought, scrolling through. Then, a familiar name caught my eye. What? I muttered, seeing Lisa's name in the email folder. With a sinking feeling, I opened the email. The contents made me gasp. There were messages confirming an affair between them. I love you. Can't wait to see you. It was like reading a stranger's words, probably from around when she realized she was pregnant, about six months ago. There were many emails from that time. One line in particular made my eyes widen. I'm pregnant. It's yours. His reply to her was kind. He was happy about the pregnancy, but said he couldn't divorce me, promising to provide financially for the child once he became CEO. He even expressed a desire to continue their relationship. Seeing their exchange, I was filled with rage. I had been deceived by my husband and best friend. My trust in them, built up over years, crumbled in an instant. Unforgivable. How could they have an affair behind my back? How did they think I felt hearing about her pregnancy? I knew she was in a tough situation, but I was genuinely happy for her. Despite wanting children myself and are drifting apart, I was happy for my friend. But I had been betrayed all along. From that day, I decided to gather evidence of their affair. I saved the email exchanges and even hired a detective to investigate my husband. It turned out he visited her apartment almost daily. On weekends, they would go to a mall in the next county to buy baby stuff. Photos from the detective showed them happily choosing baby clothes. Though I was seething with anger, I couldn't stop crying. That should have been me with him, but it's too late for regrets now. I've already decided to get my revenge. After gathering enough evidence, I was ready to confront them. But then, I received a message that Lisa had gone into labor. I decided to wait until after the birth to address the affair. The next day, she messaged me that she had safely delivered. My husband suggested we visit her, so I went with him to the maternity ward, evidence in hand. Confronting them about the affair right after childbirth might seem cruel, but I couldn't back down now. We were led to Lisa's room and then to the newborn nursery. She pointed out her baby among several others. That's my baby girl. She's a bit on the small side. Oh, she's really cute. You did great, Lisa. It was incredibly painful, but once she was born, I forgot all about it. Being a mother is amazing. My heart, however, was filled with loathing. I'm sorry, little one. You are so adorable, but things might get tough soon. Back in Lisa's room, my husband couldn't stop smiling. Ma'am, that baby really was adorable. She smiled happily and thanked him. He then turned to me with a smile. Right, Sandra? What? Babies are cute, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Especially when they look just like you. Their expressions froze instantly. He forced a smile at my comment. Hey, what are you saying? Saying she looks like me sounds weird. I meant it in that weird way. What? I know about you too. That you've been having an affair and that Frank is a baby's father. They were speechless. Lisa turned pale and started trembling. 
I pulled out the evidence I had collected and laid it before them, draining the color from their faces. Frank, are you going to deny it even after seeing this? Are you going to pretend it didn't happen? It's not like that. We, we were together just once. And what? Even if that's true, the fact remains she got pregnant from that one time, right? Um... I ignored him and turned to Lisa, who quickly started apologizing. I'm sorry, Sandra. I didn't mean for this to happen. I had feelings for Frank, but I never expected to get pregnant. Enough. I don't care how you felt. You had an affair, got pregnant with my husband's child, and had the baby. That's the fact. I'm sorry. Don't bother apologizing. I won't forgive you. But... Her tears didn't change my mind. They had done something unforgivable. They must face the consequences for what they have done. I firmly told them both. I will be filing for alimony from both of you. Whether you have a child or not doesn't matter. You will pay for what you have done. I will also inform your parents, Frank, and I want a divorce. As for you becoming the next CEO, that's off the table. Handle your affairs however you want from now on. With that, I left the hospital room and went straight to a lawyer to start the alimony and divorce proceedings. The divorce was finalized with Frank's faults recognized. Both Frank and Lisa were ordered to pay a lump sum in alimony. Contrary to my expectations, they didn't marry. Their parents were furious, and Lisa was taken back home. She now works day and night to pay off the debt incurred from the alimony, and her parents are looking after the child. Frank had been neglecting his work at the company. Assuming he soon resigned and became isolated within the company, there is no prospect of promotion for him now and he's viewed unfavorably by his colleagues. They haven't met since the incident. It's a fitting consequence for their actions. I feel nothing but schadenfreude. As for me, I'm diligently working every day. After the divorce, I became the candidate for the next CEO, striving to meet the expectations around me. I want to repay my parents through my work for all the worry I caused them. Marriage isn't everything. I will find my own way to happiness.